Jan, do you want to read that? I think you want to do roll call first. No, I read it first. I don't know, whichever way. All right, real quick. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL. This uh, conference will now be recorded. Segment 18, I don't know what that is, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Town of Harwich Community Preservation Committee on Thursday, November 5th, 2020 at 6 p.m. will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Harwich website at www.harwich-ma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so in the following manner on channel 18 or by watching the simulcast at Harwich 18 dot d y n b n s dot org slash cablecast slash public slash live period a s p x question mark channel one d equals one no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Town of Harwich's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay, well done. All right, thank you. Um, all right, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. We're gonna take a roll call vote. Um, I'm going to start with Donna. Donna Kalanick, present. Robert. Bob Doan, present. John. John Ketchum, present. Joe. Joe Parley, present. David. David Nixon, present. Okay, moving on um, to guests for public comment. Is, is there anybody available for public comment? Yes, hello, this is Patrick Autzen. Okay, Patrick, go ahead, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, my reason for calling this evening uh, during your meeting is simply to introduce myself and um, state that I'm looking forward to working with you on the project submitted last Friday on hydration stations for the town of Harwich. So, uh, that's that's the message. Um, my question simply is, what's next, or what what to expect? All right. So thank you. Okay, Patrick. When we get to that point in time, um, you will be notified when to sh when to come to the CPC meeting, and we'll have a discussion of your project at that time. Plain and simple. Okay, very good. So I'll hear from you via email or phone call or text or something. Yes, via email. Okay. Very good. I will look forward to working with you. Um, this will be before the end of the year, right? Sorry, repeat that, please. We'll have the discussion before the end of the year. Um, when when we can make our schedule available for you, we will let you know. All right, very good. I'll stand by. Thank you. All righty. Thank you for calling. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. Okay. Next, um, this is not on the agenda, and I want you all to see this envelope. It's a certified letter to the CPC. Um, I picked it up Friday in the CPC mailbox. Um, I don't know who signed for it, how it got there, but it's there. And it's a petition from um, 654 taxpayers of the town of Howitch. And it's addressed to the CPC Preservation Committee. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm gonna give you a couple of snippets 
for what, for what this is. Dan Howitz Community Pres Preservation Committee. I'm a Howitz resident who, along with many other concerned residents, started a petition regarding the 100 unit housing development proposed in East Howitz. So far, 654 people have joined this effort and I've enclosed a copy of the signatures for your review. The petition states, Block do not support construction of the 100 housing unit development under the guise of affordable housing in East Towage. Now, this is this petition to the CPC was a moot point. There is no application for housing, 100 new housing in, in this year's application process. But it was addressed to the CPC and I wanted the board member, the board members to be aware of it. So moving on. Um, can I have approved, can I get approval of the CPC minutes for September 17th, 2020 remote meeting? I'll move to approve the minutes for the uh, CPC remote meeting. Is there a second? Second. That was Joe, yes? Yeah, that was Joe. So we have a move and a second. Can I take a roll call vote, please? Starting with John. John Ketchum, aye. Robert. Bob Doan, aye. Joseph. Joe McPerlin, aye. Donna. Donna Kalanick, aye. And David, David Nixon, aye. Okay, moving on, on the new business. Um, accepting and submitting the status reports on the CPC projects with open balances. There's a number of nine reports that we received. Um, and this is merely to acknowledge that we have received copies, hard copies of the, of the reports. Do we need a motion for this? I just want them in the record, that's all. Okay, that's fine. Is that okay with the rest of the board? Yes. All right. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, um, the next thing is rescinding the open balance of the of 2016 Article 30 Arbor House Ramp Access Porch and Door Replacement Project. So we have discussed this. The money's sitting there. The money hasn't been used in a few years. Um, I'd like a motion to rescind. Um, may I? May I speak to this? Go ahead, John. Uh, I'm sorry, Robert. Uh, <laughs> uh, is this, um, wasn't this broken up into part of the money that uh, didn't we already rescind part that they aren't going to spend and the only remaining amount was for the cornices on the porch? That's correct. And no action has been taken at all. The, the um, I believe in the report, about the access, I read that they are working with John Eldridge to uh, complete that. That's been years, Robert. Yeah, but I still would like to remain this uh, open uh, instead of having to come back in another year for the uh, few dollars that it is. Fair enough. Um, John, any comment on this? Let's see outstanding balance. How, how much would be rescinded? $2,134.73. Jeez. I, I will uh, volunteer to follow up that personally. Donna, oh, I'm sorry. John, go ahead. I, I support Bob in this. I, I don't think it's... I, I do get the point that you don't want to just let it hang out there and it's been hanging out for quite a while. Uh, but if Bob gets on it and tries to resolve it, um, <clears throat> maybe we should take it up a month from now as well and see whether anything is, has transpired in the meantime. But that shouldn't be a big deal. Someone, it's less than a day's work probably for somebody, right? Just, just. Uh, 
uh, probably a little little longer than that. Um, they have to cut them out, but yeah, it's it's not a a lot lot of work. Okay, I would still Bob's desire to try to close this properly. Um, Donna. Um, I'll also support Bob's request as long as at the next meeting we have a time frame for when the work will be completed. Um, so I think if we can move it to the next agenda for an update um, and uh, Bob can find out uh, when, you know, a, a real date for when this will occur, then. Um, I'm willing to wait until then. Are you all set, Donna? Mm -hmm. Joe. Yeah, I, I agree. I was just going to say mostly everything that Donna just said. I just bottled will do this. I'm sure it's give us specific timeline on on from those people he's going to talk to. That's all. So I'm good. Okay. Robert, you have the ball. Thank you. Okay, next. Um we're going to go into the first night presentations of the 2020-2021 CPA applications. There's 16 projects that were submitted this year. Each applicant will be given five minutes to make a presentation and 15 minute increments of time for CPC members. So we're going to start with, what time is it? Yeah, that's fine. We're going to start with the Brooks Park Lighting Project and that be under Recreation 13. So, um, Eric, welcome to the meeting. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Um, just for the record, I'm Eric Beebe, Recreation Director. Um, I'm gonna be speaking on all four of these articles before you tonight that we put in for this year. Um, you are very familiar with all four of them. Um, I will start uh, with uh, Brooks Park Lighting Project, Phase 5, Part 2. Um, as you know, last year, phase five was funded for Brooks Park Lighting to complete the Brooks Park project. Uh, this included a whole new LED lighting system for the park, um, all controls, um, remote access, um, everything included. Um, in the meantime, we have had the town administrator's office as well as the town engineer um, wanted to do an additional engineering study because they, uh, the the new newer town engineer felt that some of the original quotes that we based our request on were missing some things. Um, him being an engineer knew that, um, so he did do it. Uh, they they contracted out and did a new engineering and design study that came back with a much higher number um, than we originally had. Um, so the the request this year for for part two of this phase five. Is for $125,000 in addition. Um, I was hoping Joe or Griffin would be here tonight to explain some of it in detail because I'm not an engineer. Um, but a, a large part of it's due to um, new LED lighting systems that are in place now that are available that would be appropriate for the project, um, as well as some parts of the project, um, maybe prep work um, and, and what would happen after the lights are put in that wasn't included in the original quote. Um, so, you know, you guys know a lot about this project from last year, um, but it is, the, you know, the last phase of our five, five phase Brooks Park project. Uh, we really want to complete it, uh, but we do want to complete it the right way. We never like coming back asking for more money, um, but we don't want to get to the bid process and start work on the project and find out we don't have enough. So we are hoping that the 120, we know the 125 will cover uh, the balance of what we need to get the project done. Um, there's a good chance it'll be less than that, um, but we want to make sure uh, that we get the project done and that we get it done right because we've been waiting a long time to get this done. I'm as frustrated as some of you may be, um, and uh, we're looking forward to getting it done um, with your um, approval. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to open this up for discussion for the board. Um, I'm going to start with John. Yeah, so um, do I understand correctly that the original plan uh, for this phase five 
did not include LED lighting? Was it for more traditional uh, whatever whatever gets used? Um, no, the, the plan did include, it was an LED lighting system. According to the engineer and our town engineer, as well as the engineering study that came back, there's more advanced LED lighting systems that are available than what was oh. given in the original quote that would be more appropriate for what we want to do over there. Um, if there's specific questions about the lighting um, or the or the, the specs of the project, um, I could definitely relay them to the town engineer because he'd be more appropriate to answer those questions than me. <clears throat> yeah, well, I guess I would be curious about, I mean, you say more modern LED lighting systems that would be more appropriate. I'd like to know what that really means. In what way is it more appropriate? What is it about the more recent ones? Uh, I mean, did the original spec that you guys got not fill? I mean, I assume you had a set of requirements and you went out for bid and you got bids that fit the requirements. So, but now you're saying, oh, we changed our requirements and we want more money. Is, is that what's going on? Or is it that there was something about the original bids that didn't really meet your requirements and you need more money now to uh, to put out for bid something will actually meet your requirements. It's it's a it's a little bit of both. Um, we didn't put it out to bid. We received the quote. We received several quotes no, in order to come up with the funding request. Um, but it's a, it's a mixture of things. It's not just uh, there's a new system out and we want that system. There were things left out of the quote, the original quotes that need to be put in for the, the extra money to be able to get this job done the right way. Um, again, specific wise, um, I'm gonna have to defer to the town engineer who was supposed to be on tonight, but is not currently. Okay, well, I'm an engineer too, and I just can't, I just, I, I wanna see the details. I wanna understand what it is you're getting and why the first one wasn't adequate for some reason. So the, uh, uh, another half of that question is, what relationship does this project bear to the White House field um, lighting project? Um, is there any opportunity for some uh, economies of scale? I mean, are they two completely different things? Going John, why don't in? we hold, why don't you focus your attention on this particular article? Then when we get to the next one, White House field, then okay. tie in. All right. Okay. I'm, right. Well then. And, and just so you know, there is um, some details of those expenses in the packet um, from the engineer. It's Thompson Engineering that submitted the uh, new engineering study. I'd be happy. It's like a hundred and something page packet. I'd be happy to send that over to you guys as well. I just kind of brought in the, the actual numbers from it. Well, so, I will look at it. I can't say please. I would read all 100 pages probably, but I would look at that. I'd like to. Okay, I'll send it to you guys. Sure. Donna, you all set? I'm done. Thank you. Donna. Thank you. I would also read the engineering study. Um, I did have a question. Uh, on the uh, budget, you have $9,950 for the Thompson Engineering Study. Was that just for Brooks Park or was that for? Uh, it, it actually included White House Field as well. Um, okay, so it was half and half? Yeah, it was split up. Yep. Okay. All right, so you should um, you should change that so that it's it's correct. Um, okay, I, I mean I do know in in your description um, that you know the delay because of the delay there is an increased cost due to due to inflation, um, and I think that's unfortunate. Um, that's that's the cost of waiting on projects, and now in a pandemic, some of these products are harder to get as well. Um, in the engineering report, is there information about how much saving in electricity uh, there would be for converting to LED? 
Because I think that's important, right? Because if there's some savings and there's some payback over the the life of the project, um, I think that's important information if you had it. Um, that is included in the full report that I will send you, um, but it's typically the LED systems uh, save on electric costs by 80 to 90% according to the reports that they've given us per month. Okay, but they, it has an actual breakdown on the, the, what you spend on the lighting currently and what you would save. I, I, can add, I can add that in when I send okay. you guys. That would be sure. helpful. Sure. Um, and just my last uh, question is, Eric, the fees that you collect for renting Brooks Park, where, where do they go? Are they set aside in a, in a separate fund or do they go to the general fund? Those go to the uh, revolving fund in a, in a subdivision of the revolving fund called field maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a ton of money annually, but uh, what we do with it is small little projects, whether we need like a new bench um, or uh, sometimes it gets into somewhat larger projects. A couple of years ago, a new well was needed um, and it came up out of nowhere. Uh, the, the old well broke, we didn't have time to wait. So we were able to use the revolving fund field maintenance money for that. But it's usually set aside for small projects for, the, for fields or parks or wherever the money came in. And what's the balance in that account? The current balance of the revolving fund in general is $12,300. I'd have to get a breakdown as to how exactly how much is in the field maintenance portion of it for you. Okay. And is that a typical balance that you would have? Yeah, we'd usually be a little higher in our revolving fund right around now because we'd be coming off of a, a summer season um, full right. of programming yep. um, and more field rentals than we do now because of the, all the COVID stuff going on. Um, but it's it's a healthy balance for us. It's pretty typical. And is the is the field usage the usage for the park um, relatively high at night or? Yeah, well, the, the lights wouldn't be for the field. It's just for the courts. Um, yeah. The, yeah, the courts are used uh, quite a bit at night um, for in this in the good season for pickleball and tennis, uh, as well as uh, the basketball courts get used quite a bit at night. Okay, thank you. Those are all my questions. Thank you. Joe. Thank you. Um, one, uh, so, so in phase five, the 333-5 that was approved already, that was for the lighting project that you had in place at that time. Just to, I just want to clarify this. I think John did, but I just want to make sure I'm hearing the same thing. And now we're going at one. We're going to, to one twenty-five to because of the LED thing, correct? It's it's because of the LED thing and and other things that were left out of the original quotes that the current town engineer and the engineering study thinks we need in the cost estimate. Okay. Okay. And um, in your phase five breakdown, the eighty-eight sixty-seven contingency on phase five part two. Is that um, is that inflation number? What, what's that number for? Am I reading that wrong? That that's the standard. That's a that's a standard contingency that's placed upon projects. Um, the bottom line number of one twenty five, and the breakdowns were provided by the town engineering department of what to submit. Um, so that's the contingency they put upon it and told us to add to request. <laughs> Cool. I'd, like, okay. I'd like to get back on here with the town engineer and town administrator so they can explain their part of this project. Okay, I'm, I'm good right now. I'm, I'm waiting for White House, but I'm okay. Yep. Robin. Hi. Uh, the, um, I believe it must have been a couple cycles ago that this was approved because I don't recall it. Um, so I kind of have a couple basic questions. Sure. Is, do the current lights, um, do you have current lighting there now? We do. And and how is it controlled? It's controlled. There's a light box um, over um, to the left of the tennis courts um, that has a timer in it. And there's a button on the outside. So they can be turned on um, up to a certain time at night. And uh, will that continue with the new one? Or you kind of mentioned yeah. that there was a remote 
access or control? The, the new one, there would still be a remote access, like a button to push, um, but there'd also be um, actual remote access through, a, through, say, my cell phone or, a, right. you know, somebody in the department's cell phone to be able to turn them off or turn them on if needed uh, remotely. Okay. And so anybody wanting to play tennis at the evening or, or whatever um, can turn on the lights themselves, correct? Yeah, up to a certain time. Yep. Yeah. And and there's so there's really never any fees collected for the use of the lights per se. Not for the use of the lights there, no. Just for um people booking if a private group books the tennis courts, um there's the pickleball group that that has a program there that's rec sponsored um or if the field or park is used, but those aren't under the lights. Okay. Uh I think that's it, other than I am interested in seeing the engineering report. Sure. Thank you. You got it. Any other questions about this particular project from the board? We're set. Moving on. Eric, you're up. All right. Uh, the second one on your list, I'm kind of just going in order here. Sand Pond Revitalization Project. We did come to this come to you guys with this last year um, in the amount of $83,500. Um, there is a map, uh, the same map as last year included in your packet showing uh, what our plans are there um, to continue on uh, with the upgrades of Sam Pond. Um, the, we see that that pond and that recreation area as a very um, untapped resource at the moment. For years it was used quite a bit in the summers, uh, swim lessons, um, we had lifeguards there. Uh, that we, we made the choice a couple years ago to switch swim lessons over to Cahoon's Beach because um, we saw the, the attendance there dwindling. We switched our lifeguards over to Cahoon's Beach instead as well. Um, the attendance was dwindling. There was a, there was a stigma against Sand Pond. Uh, people thought the water was dirty. Um, they just didn't, you know, they didn't like the atmosphere as much as they used to. Um, the water isn't dirty. We do have it tested. Uh, quite a bit throughout the summer. We didn't get one negative test this, this past summer. Um, but we see it as a, a, a great area that just needs a little sprucing up. Um, it has a large parking lot. The ultimate goal would be to do these upgrades and be able to move lifeguard or bring lifeguards back there in addition to a gate attendant uh, where we could charge daily pass and make daily uh, pass revenue there to cover the costs. Um, but this phase uh, would include Sorry. So this would include the removal of the current boathouse that's there. Um, new split rail fencing. Um, you'll, you can see the fencing that separates the parking lot from the stairway that goes down to the beach. Um, where, the where the current boathouse is, we were looking to put uh, playground equipment, including a, a set of swings and two spinner apparatus. Um, those are quite expensive, and then the, the real expensive part of that is the surfacing that's required there on any new playgrounds. Um, it would also include uh, a family picnic area, um, benches and picnic tables, um, and then any uh, prep grading, landscaping, and beautification. Uh, there could be some removal of dead trees. There's pine trees um, growing up on the, the beach that are few of them are dead, um, but this is a, a phase two leading into what we see could be a phase three next year if this is approved, um, where we could put in a, a storage shed next to the, the restroom facility uh, for lifeguards to eventually use for equipment, um, and also uh, re-nourishing the beach itself with purchased sand. Um, we can't take sand from our, our current uh, saltwater beaches and dredging projects it's not allowed to be moved from a saltwater beach to a freshwater beach, but those are future phases. So the, the one we're looking at now is for the picnic area, the playground, um, the new fencing and uh, beautification of the beach in general. Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, we're gonna start with Joe. Did you, did you call on me? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I, I just want to make sure. Um, so, so predominantly, Eric, the, the, the 125 for this phase is really for the equipment, if you will, and things for the playground and the play area. And, and okay, 
it, what I'm reading here is you you guys are going to go do a lot of in-house labor along with the highway department to help do a lot of this other lit of groundwork. Am I correct? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, the price would have been much higher if it wasn't for highways kind of contributions, potential contributions. Okay. All right, I'm good. I'm good, Dave. Thanks. You're welcome. Donna. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Eric, um, will this, beyond the, the, the area where you're creating some playground space, which I know is required to be ADA compliant, is this going to create um, any more um, access to the pond than currently exists? Because it, it is a, a tough location for anybody um, who might have physical challenges to get down to the pond area. Yeah, part of the thing we were looking into for the, the general, it, it's labeled as landscape and beautification, but once the boathouse is down, uh, we would have to, part of the playground would be creating an access to the playground, which would be just a gentle slope down down to there, whether it be, we're not sure if it'll yet be a stone dust pathway uh, going down at, at a allowed grade down to the playground area. Once you're down to the playground area, you're pretty much in a flat zone if you wanted to access the beach itself. Would it be able to handle like a Moby chair going down that path? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And the the items um, that you're suggesting for the playground are those off of a state bid list pricing? But yeah, they are. They are off the state bid list pricing. Um, the same state bid list uh, that we used for the uh, Brooks Park playground expansion. Um, same okay. same list. Yep. Um, just, I'm curious whether or not the Recreation Department has done any surveying of its participants and users or through the Chamber of Commerce about what would make people use this location again. So the, the beautifications that you're proposing, are they substantiated in some way? Um, we haven't done a specific survey on Sand Pond and the area of Sand Pond itself. Um, a couple years ago, we did do a survey, though, uh, when we were in the midst of the whole Brooks Park expansion project. Um, just kind of, we, we didn't make it about Brooks Park. We made it a general survey, seeing what kind of things people would want um, or think we need in town. Um, one the, I, no, I have to look back. I could send you the results of that survey as well. Um, but I believe either the top or one of the top things was more playgrounds. Um, the other thing was more basket, outdoor basketball courts. Um, but playground was on top of the list. We really don't, other than uh, the Brooks Park playground and the, uh, the school, which it's currently not there yet, um, there's really no other playgrounds, and especially over in that area of town. And is that in your open space and recreation plan as well? sort of an identification of what places throughout town could use some improving or? Yeah, that I believe that is in the open space plan that was written uh, a couple years ago uh, that I think they had said we had, you know, we had one playground that wasn't a school playground. And it said we needed one to one and a half more in town. Um, but I could, I could check and verify that in the open space. Well, I'm assuming it's on your website, so I can take a look at the um, open space and recreation plan myself. Yep, um, but it's either there or on the planning website, too. Yeah, I would appreciate the uh, results of the survey that you did do, though. Sure, I can do that. Um, and then I guess just the last um, question is, um, well, I want to make sure, you know, that the, the previous phase that's been funded um, to do the rostrums, that's definitely going to be done for the 2021 season. That's what I'm told by the town engineer. He's going to be responsible for putting together the RFP. Um, the, design and of the design of the septic has already been done. So on our end, everything's ready to go. Um, all that has to be done is put out to bid by the town engineer's office and the town administrator's office, which they assured me would be done very soon and that we'd have a bathroom in place by this coming summer season. Okay. 
Um, that, that parking lot is also not in the greatest of shapes. Um, I don't see anything in here that addresses, you know, down the road. I would assume if you were to get more people using that location, that you would also make the parking lot. Um, it's also not very accessible at all, that parking lot. Um, just um, in terms, of, in terms of the, you know, the material that's on it, it's not in great shape. But um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Donna. Robert. Uh, yes. So, um, one question is that: What would your response be at town meeting uh, when you, when we're putting in this playground after we've just spent? 500,000 on the other. How would you make the townspeople justify that or accept that? Um, I, I would say that this is a playground in a, a different area of town. Um, and it's it's at a recreational area to begin with. Um, so when people are there for the beach, we, we really want to promote the idea of it being a family pond beach, kind of like Cahoon's is now. Um, part of that is having this little playground area. This wouldn't be a full out playground. It would be several apparatus. Um, this would also be a playground that would be accessible at any time of the day, um, whereas the school one um, during, you know, during the school year in the spring and fall months, it couldn't be accessed during the school day. Um, this would be any time of day, all day long, um, and we think it would really promote the family atmosphere act, um, feeling of the pond and what, we, what we're striving for. <laughs> okay. Um, there still is a lot of... Um, uh, the conception or the um, feeling about this pond, uh, there's still a lot of chatter and just fairly recently on how it uh, old timers um, uh, Facebook page, it, they got into a real big statements about, oh, nobody should be in this pond. It's, you know, I get earaches every time I go and I know it's old information probably, but it's still out there. Um, how are you going to combat that? Because, you know, uh, people I think are still um, afraid to swim there. I think our number one way to combat that is by trying to do a project like this. Um, sprucing up the pond and its amenities uh, will get families back down there like they used to be. Um, it'll get better press for the pond. Um, the, you know, there's nothing I can really do uh, about what people are saying about the quarter quality. I mean, we, we do, like I said, we do test it, the health department tests it on a regular basis. And we, I, I haven't had a bad test at, water, at Sand Pond since I've started working here 15 years ago. Um, so, you know, I think this is a big step in the right direction of sprucing up the pond itself and slowly turning around that stigma um, that somehow came upon Sand Pond. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that stigma was strong enough that you moved the swimming lessons, correct? Well, we didn't move it. Yeah, I mean, the stigma was we didn't move it because we thought the pond was dirty. We moved it because we saw the crowds leaving there. Um, right. We saw more of a safety need of having the lifeguards over at Cahoons where people were drifting to. Okay. Uh, back to the building I talked about this last year. You want to remove that building, yet you're going to come back in another phase for a shed. How big is that shed going to be? Oh, it would be a very it would be a very small um, Pine Harbor type wooden shed, uh, like you see at some of our other beaches. It would just need to be big enough to uh, hold some of the you know if the lifeguards were brought back there, um, a paddleboard, uh, beach wheelchair, um, things like the signs and things like that. Nothing near the size of the boathouse we have now. So, what about your uh, program to uh, rent kayaks then? Will that be a third party that does that, or will you do it? And if you do it, where would you store the kayak kayaks? Well, that's something we were thinking for a, a potential phase three as well. Um, we currently do the kayak rental program over at Cahoons. Um, as of right now, we, we uh, transport kayaks down there every day, and then we bring them back to the community center at the end of the day. Um, but for if we, if we do bring back lifeguards, which is essential for a kayak program to run, um, we would be looking into getting a lockable rack um, that we would still run the rentals ourselves. Um, and so we could have revenue coming in for that. Uh, and again, my, my statement is, is that you have a building there and yes, it, I guess it needs considerable maintenance, but it's large or you could even uh, 
take down the, the top part and just put a roof over the basement area, which would give you plenty of room. Um, I was told that the, the maintenance or what you would need to do to that building to make it suitable um, would be more than any type of shed or lockable rack that we could possibly get. Okay. Uh, and in removing that building, you have a uh, cinder block foundation, I believe, around that, and it's retaining a lot of sand, you know, up against that parking lot. So in your removal process or your demolition, how are you going to address um, resupporting that wall? Are you going to leave the cinder blocks? Uh, but will that be stable enough if uh, you just leave the cinder blocks without a structure on top of it? Uh, that, that could run into quite a bit of money to um, either refill that in, then you may lose your pay, playground area, or what? Do, do you have thoughts on how that would work? Well, we've talked to the highway department about the, the raising of that building, um, which they said they, they would be able to do. Um, so it, in the brief talks I've had about that, that cinder block wall, um, I would believe that would be le or at least partially left up uh, as much as we would need to, to keep the sand from flowing down. Yeah, I, I would just question the safety of that, um, but, but I'm not an engineer. So uh, the other thing is, is that you showed a very nice picture of the fencing, proposed fencing. Yet in the quote, I th or your your budget, you're saying a split reel fence, which I doubt would cover uh, that amount of money for the fence that you showed in the example as a, a type of fence you'd like to put up. Yeah, that was my that was my typo in calling it a split rail fence. It's it, it's not a split rail fence. It's a fence in the picture that is quoted. And you, and you think you do have enough money to put that kind of fence up? Yep, we've done that exact fence at Brooks Park. So okay. And is that, um, again, you know, you have, I think it's the exact same budget you had last year, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I am concerned that prices have gone up since then, uh, that I'd, I'd hate to have it come up again short uh, and you'd I've, have to uh, come back to do it. Yep, and I totally understand. I reaffirmed all the numbers um, with the companies that I got the original quotes from. Uh, so we're, we're still where we are. Okay, uh, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. John? <clears throat> yeah, hi, thank you. Um, so I wanna get back to the water quality uh, uh, question. I know you said for 15 years, you've never seen a negative test there, but that's, those tests are restricted, I believe, to E. coli. Which is, I mean, that's one thing you want to look out for, definitely. But these days in Harwich and on Cape Cod in general, there are pretty big problems with uh, cyanobacteria. There have been algae blooms in West Reservoir, which is not that far from Sand Pond, and other places in Harwich. So uh, my concern is about whether um, <clears throat> money is being invested in in uh, Sand Pond area and whether we have any reassurance that there aren't going to be blooms there that are going to result in um, the pond being unusable. And I know this year in Harwich, there were some very late season blooms um, and um, concerned about sand pond and, and whether you have taken this issue into account. At Cahoons Beach is, is on Long Pond, right? So Long Pond has been treated uh, with alum and at least for the relatively, for the near future, in the next five or 10 years, there probably isn't any issue there with, with algae blooms, but there was a big problem at Hinkley's Pond that was, again, solved uh, with alum treatments. Um, but if this was if this was to become a problem at Sand Pond, um, A, people wouldn't be able to swim there, or at least intermittently they wouldn't be able to swim there because these algae can cause severely toxic conditions. And the only sort of near-term solution for that in a place like Sand Pond 
would probably be an alum treatment, which is another a whole undertaking and expense. So I'm I wondering what your thoughts are about that, whether whether you have any confidence or reassurance, or whether the rec department along with the health department has any plans to be proactive about this to at least test ponds, particularly ponds where there are recreational town recreational facilities for cyanobacteria. Um, well, as far as reassurances that an algae bloom won't happen at Sand Pond, I, I obviously can't make any of those. Um, but I think as far as, you know, testing and what they test for is fully under the purview of the health department. We have nothing to do with uh, what, they're, what they're mandated to test for. We're just uh, on the receiving end. They tell us whether the water is safe to swim in or not, whether we can have it open to the public or not. Um, we've never had any problem with that. We've never had to close it down. Um, as far as future possibility of alum treatments, uh, my feeling on that is that if it, if it did come down to us needing to do that in the future at some point, we would need to do that either way, um, whether we do these improvements or not. Um, if we don't do these improvements, there's still going to be people that go to Sand Pond and swim there. Um, so it's, it's going to be something that would need to be done anyway. Um, but as of right now, all I can speak to is the fact that we haven't had um, any negative tests, like I said, and we, we do check in with the health department every year, um, and we, we've never had any hesitation uh, on their part or, or them telling us not to send or to be hesitant about sending people in to swim there. Okay, well, I don't know about the history specifically of sand pond and whether there have ever been cyanobacteria blooms or toxic algae blooms at sand pond. I don't know, but seems to me and it's maybe not our purview here but i am concerned about committing you know significant resources in a place where there there are i guess the potential for for issues of this sort is unknown at this point um, um so that's all i have dave i'm done thank you is there anybody else on the board that would like to go ahead donna I, I just have one more quick question, Eric. Um, those sure. two spinner, those two spinners. What age are they rated for? The two spinners. Um, yeah, I, it do, it doesn't have it in the little blur. Uh, well, I'll, I'll send that out to you guys. I don't have the packet of the actual uh, brochure in front of me. Where yeah, I was just I was just wondering if you're you know trying to address multiple you know, age groups with those two choices. Yeah, we are, we are between the swings and the two spinners, we're trying to encompass a bunch of uh, an age gap, um, just like we did over at Brooks Park. Uh, we, we are gearing it a little bit towards younger aged um, for the family aspect, um, but it, it does some of the spinning, I'll get you the exact numbers, but the, some of the spinners do are for old, a little older kid too as well. <coughs> All set, Donna. Is there any other board member that would like to speak? Hearing none, Eric, you have the floor. All right, the third one on the list for you guys tonight is the Senior Memorial Field Fencing Project. Um, this was brought to you guys last year as well, as a, uh, along with the uh, Brooks Park Fencing. You did choose to fund the Brooks Park Fencing, but not Senior Memorial Field Fencing last year. Um, we came upon this project. Uh, we were told by the, the highway department that it is in desperate need of repair. It's been there, uh, I believe, well over 20 to 25 years. Um, the Senior Softball League has reported that it's falling apart in places. I included a few photos. I could, I could certainly give you more if you'd like. If any of you want to take a ride down there to look at it, it's the fields behind White House Field. Um, and if you ever want to get in there, the gates are locked. Just feel free to give me a call. I can open it up for you and show you around. Um, this would include all the fen the complete uh, replacement of the fencing as well as the backstop around the whole senior memorial field. Um, parts of it now are bowing. Um, the, some of the posts are, are bent or leaning. It's uh, going to become a safety hazard. And we're acting on the uh, advice of the, the highway department um, to, to do a full replacement. When we did have companies come out and give us quotes as well on the project, 
they agreed that it definitely needed full replacement and not repairs. We've done repairs to it, um, but it's currently now at the end of its useful life, um, and it's time to to repair to replace the the entire thing. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. John, we'll start with you. Um, I actually don't have any questions about this thing. Okay. Rob, we'll go to you. Uh, the, um, I did uh, view this. I viewed it last year, and it's extremely rusted, so I agree that it's in a very bad shape. Uh, the concern I have is, has your pricing been rechecked on that this year so you'll have satisfactory money for it? It has. Uh, we got reaffirmed quotes on that as well. Good. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Robert. Donna? Yeah, that, that was my same question. The estimate that you have in here is from July 3rd of 2019. Um, so I think it would be better if you have an, an updated estimate, if you provide that to us. Um, I also want to make sure that this company is using prevailing wage rates. Um, installation of fencing is subject to the prevailing wage law. Not everybody gets that. Um, Donna, that's, that's a little out of our preview. Yeah, well, but I, can, I don't. I can answer it too. I, the, um, hold on, Eric. Yeah. Eric, hold on. I don't want to get into details such as that, Donna. That's fine. I, I was questioning the quote that was provided, David. It does not specify that that is being used. Um, and I could I could highlight that too. The um, the the actual the quote that's in the packet is the one from last year's project. I do currently have a new quote. That's why on your budget sheet, I just didn't have it in time to stick it in the packet. The new quote is thirty four nine forty, so it did go up by a couple thousand dollars. Um, so I'll send that over to you, so you have the uh, updated one as well. And uh, all our all our fencing projects, when they go out to bid, um, require prevailing wages to be met. Thank you. Um, and again, with this this uh, rental as well, this the the fees from the rental they go into the same fund, and and are used for minor repairs as well. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> So the repairs that have been done up to this point were um, done with those those fees? Yep, exactly. Okay, thank you, Eric. Thank you. All set, Donna? Yes, I'm all set, David. All righty. Joe? Uh, yeah, I think everything's been covered. I just had very one quick question, Eric, on... Um, um, and, and as I've been in this committee, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of what you're doing in all these different projects. And I see you doing a lot of um, collaboration with in-house um, labor amongst the different places like the highway department, et cetera. Is, is this one of those things where it has to be soup to nuts, the bid and all that, that they cannot do any uh help with you on 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 taking the original fencing down or, or uh, this is just edification for me um yeah we usually on a project to project basis we consult with the highway department and see what kind of contribution they can possibly make um with the fencing this fencing project and several others we've done in the past they're more comfortable um with the fencing company doing the entire thing including yeah. um taking it down removal um, and installation of the new the new one. Okay. Great day. All righty. Thanks, Joe. Are there any other questions of the board about this project? Hearing none, moving on. Eric, you have the floor. All right. And the final project um, is the White House Field Lighting Project. This is very similar to the Brooks Park project when uh, the town engineer and town administrator's office decided to send out a new engineering study um, based on the fact that they didn't think original quotes included everything that was needed. Um, they sent it out for White House Field and Brooks. Uh, as we just talked about, the Brooks Park number came in 125,000 more than originally anticipated. White House Field is going to require another 100,000 to complete the project up to the, uh, the engineering office standards. Um, and just a refresher on this. This was a project to replace um, all the lights at White House Field 
um, which is the main field for, for the Harwich Mariners amongst other organizations that use it, including the, the high school baseball team. Um, they are used quite often. Those are lights that we do charge for. Um, the current lights are not LED, so we charge $65 an hour for those. Um, that covers our cost. Um, we also charge a separate fee for field use that goes into the revolving fund. Um, this would include all new LED lighting system. It would actually be less poles than, there, than are there now. Um, there would be a saving of around 80% uh, on our electric bills, according to the company. Um, it would include all installation. It would also include a remote remote access to the lights. Currently, the way the lights are turned on is there's a light shed. Um, people have to be given the key. They go in, they log down when they turn the lights on, they log down when they turn them off. Um, this would uh, allow people to do it the same way, but we'd be able to track it um, much more professionally than a, a notebook. Um, and we'd also be able to turn them off or on um, remotely from, from a distance. Um, so we really, you know, this is something that's definitely needed over there. Um, the lights themselves that are there now, the poles, uh, the stanchions are leaking. So a lot of the, we're having all kinds of electric problems. We've been replacing ballasts and bulbs every year. Um, there's actually a line item in our budget right now that was put in there, I think around four years ago. Um, so we've spent on average between 15 and $20,000 a year uh, for upkeep just to make them functional enough to have games um, at night for the Mariners especially. Um, but that's not sustainable to keep spending that amount of money every year. And it's only gonna get worse because um, every year when we turn them on, it seems that more and more are out. Um, so the only alternative to that is to have no night games at all. And that, that we see that as a detriment to the uh, programs that are run there as well as the Mariners and the field itself being such a nice field. Um, and I think that's all I have on my end. Okay, I'll open it up the board. Don. Donna? I'm sorry, did you call me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I haven't gone first yet, so I was, you know. Um, so, I mean, when this came to us last year, we struggled a little bit with the cost of it and uh, how high the cost of it was. Um, and now it's back and uh, additional funding is needed. So, um, I mean, this is a great field. Uh, you guys have done a, a wonderful job making improvements there. I think it's an asset to the town. Um, I know that none of the Cape Cod baseball, the teams were able to play this year, um, but I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't ask if you had gone back to the Mariners to see if they could contribute any more money based on the fact that the cost of the project has gone up. Um, yeah, I actually have an answer for you on that one. We've actually been in contact and have been in several meetings with the Harwich Mariners. Uh, about this additional funding for the project. Um, the original money, the original um, funding for the project from last year was three, 380, 360 from the town. And, that, and then there was an additional 75,000 pledge from the Mariners. Uh, okay. The original cost was 455, 360. This additional 100 grand we brought to the Mariners and we are currently in talks with them about their potential to uh, help uh, cover this cost. Um, nothing's definite yet. Um, meetings are ongoing, but it's a definite possibility going forward. And are there any um, uh, other types of grants out there, state grants, grants through the Cape Cod Baseball League, or other type of grant funding that um, you've looked into or that could assist with this project? There's no other grants that I have found on our end. Um, the Harwich Mariners, I believe there may be some grants through the Cape Cod Athletic Club um, that I think that they're looking into currently uh, to see if there's ways to help us with this additional funding. Um, but as far as the town and the rec recreation department side of things, there's nothing really that would match uh, this necessity. <clears throat> And are the Mariners charged $65 an hour as well um, for electricity? 
Yep, they have the same charges, um, light light use and field use uh, per game and practice that anybody else does. Um, and when, and this may be in the narrative, but would you be trying to complete this, I would, I would imagine, not for this season, but the following season, or? Yep, if it, if it is um, all through CPC funding, the additional funds, it would be for the, the season of 22. Um, if the Mariners are able to contribute um, and we get enough money now, um, we'd like to try to get it done by, by this upcoming season. By this, by the 2021 season? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, John. Yes, I, I agree with Donna. I struggled with this last year too. Uh, and uh, um, I guess really the books park falls into the same category. It's, it's a rather expensive undertaking. And I, I guess I still don't quite understand why it's so expensive. Um, maybe the engineering report will help with that. Um, and I get, I started to ask the question when we talked about Brooks Park lighting about the connection, but I guess the engineering, again, the engineering report will, will show, uh, will help with that, I assume. Um, but I still have the same question. What, what is the extra hundred thousand dollars in getting you relative to what was in the original bid? Um, is there any more, do you have any more concrete an answer to that question for White House Field uh, as opposed to, you know, uh, what you had to say about? Well, as far as, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, as far as additional funding, um, what I'd like to do is get you the report so you can see all the details. And if, if I could come back uh, with the town engineer and town administrator to speak about the, the report itself and why the need for the report and why the need for the extra funding, um, that was kind of out of our control. We determined the need for the project. We were told how much money to ask for originally, and that's what we did. Um, so I'd be happy to come back when they are available. Um, I did think they were coming tonight, but obviously they're not here. Um, but I could, in the meantime, I could send you the report and I'd be happy to come back with them um, to give detailed answers on the, the specs questions. I just don't want to give answers um, on something that I don't have an expertise in. Yeah, I, I understand. I just want to get the questions out on the table anyway. So uh, that's good. I'll look forward to seeing the report and I don't have any further questions. Thank you, John. Joe? Um, I, I'm good with this one. I, uh, John asked the question that I was going to ask, and um, yeah, I, I also want to see the report too because uh, just want to be clear: the 380 that was asked for and approved um, was, was all about new LED lighting, correct? For what yes. Else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I'd really like to see the detail in the hundred grand, um, but I know that's coming. So I'm good then, Dave. Okay. And then I just Robert. had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Robin. Uh, yeah, other than I'd like to see the report, I have no questions. Go ahead, Eric. Um, my question was, I, I'll be happy to send you that report tomorrow morning. Should I send it to, to everyone's email address? Should I send it to Jan? Should I send it to you, Dave, and you distribute it? Jan? It's a 100-page report, so it's a PDF already in a... How big is yeah, it? I believe it's around 100 pages, yeah. But I mean, were you emailed the report? Yes. Send it to me, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. I'll send it to you tomorrow morning, first thing. All right. Send it to, the, to, to me and I'll send it out to everybody. Or I could send it tonight and you guys can have some bedtime reading. <laughs> It'd be nice. <laughs> explain why, Jim, why you're concerned. Just, if it got stuck in his mailbox, it would get stuck in mine and get stuck in everybody else's. But if he's already received it via email, it's probably condensed enough to be sent out to everybody. Well, I'll try sending it tomorrow morning. If you have any issues, just let me know and I'll find another way. That sounds great. 
Okay. okay. All right, any other questions for Eric? Hearing none, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. And we'll be talking to you soon, I'm sure. That's good. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, under all business, a few of the grants for this year's applications. Um, could I have, instead of going to each board member and getting a signature, could I ask the board to give the chair permission to sign? These are all the grants for the, this year's applications as they come in. One would, be, motion. one would be, for example, a housing trust. Yeah. So go ahead. Go um, go. So I, I'm fine with you signing them, but I'd like to see them. So are they going to the uh, Board of Selectmen first? Is that what was decided? Uh, no. Okay. They're coming to the CPC first. Yeah. I'll sign it, return it to Carol. She will send it to the Board of Selectmen for their signature. So if okay. you want time for the to see the documents from Carol. Um okay. These, these so eventually eventually there'll be a public document in the Board of Selectmen's packet once yes. you sign it. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All righty. Can I have a motion, please? I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. Can I have a second? I'll second. And that motion would be, Robin? to uh, allow the chair to sign the grants uh, for the, um, uh, the, the recent um, allocations or whatever. Okay, that's Donna. I'm sorry, David, I needed a minute to think. Um, I would like to see just based on some of the public conversation that's been going on at other committees, I'd like to see the housing trust grant agreement before it's signed. Well, you you can you can see it, but we have a motion on the floor now and a second, so I'm going to call for a vote on it. But that doesn't it doesn't stop you from having access to it. Okay. Um, I'll figure out a way, some way to get it to you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Not a problem. So there's a motion and a second. All those in favor, roll call. No, roll call. Yeah. Sorry. John. John Ketchum, uh, aye. Robert. Robert Doan, aye. Donna. Donna Kalonic, aye. Go. John Brown, aye. And David, David Nixon, aye. Thank you. Um, next. Any updates needed for the website? John, is there anything that you need to do or you would like to do for the website? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have anything in particular that I think needs to be done. Um, all the uh, all the grant applications are up there, and the list is up there. I don't. And I've tried to update the news. I'm, I'm always open to people's suggestions or observations about whatever should change or stuff that needs to be there. But I don't have anything in particular in mind at the moment. Although, just as a longer term discussion item, it really would be nice if we had some file sharing capability so we didn't have to struggle with some documents. Um, but that's not a conversation for today. Already, is there any other anything else from the board members? Donna, Robert, I just want to thank John for doing that web thing. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a great job you're doing, John. 
It is. It was a lot of work. <laughs> Yo. No, I'm good. Okay. And again, I appreciate all the effort. Thank you. Um, finally, any recommendation, any for next to be on next meeting's agenda? I, are you going to be scheduling uh, four presentations next time, or, or are we going to do more if possible? We may do five. Jen, you have the floor. Right. I haven't asked anybody for next week, so I'm shooting for five projects to be presented at next month's meeting, next week's meeting. And Joe, I'm not sure if you were here then. We're going to start at 6.30. Is that That's right? That's right. I did, I, did, I, did, I, I did miss that, but I'm okay with that. Okay. Hey, thank you, Joe. Donnie, how about you? Oh, I'm all set. Thank you. Already, Robert. I'm all set. Gone. All set. Okay. This is. I'm sorry. This is next Thursday, six thirty, right? Yes, November twelfth, okay. oh. next Thursday. And I'll send y'all an agenda. I'm just going to ask the presenters tomorrow. Hopefully they can say yes, and then we will create the agenda and I'll send it out to you. Okay. I guess we're okay. With that. <laughs> All right. Uh, motion to adjourn, please. So moved. All those in favor. Oh, okay. Roll call vote. John. John Ketchum, aye. Robert. Robert Doan, aye. Donna. Donna Kalanick, aye. Joe. Joe McFarland, aye. And David Nixon, aye. Folks, have a good night. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.